Hello, this is the fourth video of the Algorithm 1 series for OCR AS Discrete Further Maths. And it looks at a sorting algorithm, the bubble sort. We may want to sort a list of numbers into ascending order or descending order, or a list of words or letters into alphabetical order. We might do this because we need a sorted list to perform some other algorithm, for example the first fit decreasing algorithm that we looked at in the last video. In the OCR specification, we need to cover two algorithms, one called the bubble sort, which we're doing in this video, and the other the shuttle sort, which will be in the next video. So this is the bubble sort algorithm. As you can see, it is written in English text. So step one, if there's only one number in the list, then stop. So we talk about this idea of the current list because after each pass, the list changes. So at the beginning, the current list is the whole list to be sorted. Step two, make one pass down the current list, starting at the beginning of a list, comparing numbers in pairs and swapping them as necessary. We swap, of course, if we're depending on whether we want to have an ascending order or a descending order. Step three, if no swaps have occurred, then stop. So this is for termination or end step. Otherwise, reduce the length of a current list by leaving out the last element of a current list and return to step 1. So step 3 not only provides the end or termination step, but also the loop, the iteration. Let's look at bubble sort example 1. Here we are asked to sort the following list into ascending order, and we'll need to note the number of comparisons and swaps made on each pass. Let's write a note for the comparison and swaps as we go. Comparing the first two numbers, 5 and 8, we note that we have made a comparison, but we don't need to swap because they are um, already in ascending order. We then compare the 8 and the 3. Here we have made another comparison and also we will do a swap. Looking then at what is now the 8 compared to the 12, we note we have a comparison, but no swap. Comparing then the 12 and the 1, we have both a comparison and a swap. Comparing then the 12 with the 15, we have a comparison but no swap. Finally, we compare the 15 and the 7, which is a comparison and a swap, and then the 15 and the 6, which will also be a comparison and a swap. That is the first pass, and we will note that we have made seven comparisons and four swaps. Let's look at the second pass then. So, comparing the five with the three, that will be a swap. Comparing what were five with an eight, however, will not be a swap. Comparing the 8 with the 1 will be a swap. Comparing the 8 with the 12 will not be a swap. Comparing the 12 with the 7 will be a swap. And then the 12 with the 6 will be a swap. We will have made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 comparisons, in other words, the arrows and just the loops, and 1, 2, 3, 4 swaps. So, at the end of a second pass, we will now have 3, 5, 1, 8, 7, 6, 12, and 15. You will note that the 15 was not looked at in this case, 
and now we will have two numbers at the end, the 12 and the 15, which will not be looked at because they in effect have bubbled along to the end of a row for the ascending order. Let's carry on. So, for the third pass then, we will compare the 3 and the 5, no change, but the 5 and the 1, there will be a swap. The 5 and the 8, no swap. The 8 and the 7 will swap, and so will the 8 and the 6. Thus, for this we have had 5 comparisons and 3 swaps. So at the end of a third pass, we will have a 3, a 1, a 5, 7, 6, 8, and we haven't touched the 12 or 15. Looking then at what will happen next time. 3 and 1, comparison and swap. 3 and 5, comparison but no swap. 5 and 7, comparison but no swap. But 7 and 6, a comparison and a swap. So we are down to 4, and in this case, 2 swaps. That lead, would lead us to 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12 and 15. Finally we compare 1 and 3, no swap, 3 and 5, no swap, 5 and 6, no swap. Therefore we have made 3 comparisons and no swaps. As soon as we have the no swaps, that means we finish. Here we have example 2. In this case we're asked to use the bubble sort to sort the list into descending order. You can see that we've got a C and an S for the comparisons and swaps at the side. So in this case we would compare 9 with 5, 5 with 1, 1 with 14 in which would be a swap, 1 with 8 which would be a swap, 1 with 2, which would be a swap, 1 with 11, swapping again, and 1 with 10. So in this case, because we want descending order, the smallest number has bubbled along to the end. As you can see from the arrows, we have made 7 comparisons for 8 numbers and, in this, and 5 swaps. So, the next pass would look like 9, 5, 14, 8, to pair, 9 and 5, 5 and 14 would be a swap, 5 and 8 would be a swap, but not with 2. However, 2 would swap with the 11 and the 10. So in this case, comparisons and 4 swaps. So, the list would now read 9, 14, 8, 5, 11, 10, 2 and 1. In the next pass, we will see that the 9 and 14 would swap, the 9 and the 8 would not, The 8 and the 5 would not, but the 5 will swap with the 11 and then with the 10. In this case we can see that we have made 5 comparisons and 3 swaps. By now you're probably getting the idea that the comparisons decrease by 1 each pass, but that the swaps really depend on the numbers in the list. 
This would then give us 14, 9, 8, 11, 10. And then those that are now fixed, the 5, the 2 and the 1. Looking at the next pass then, 14 and 9 will not swap, nor will the 9 and 8, but 8 will swap with the 11 and the 10. As expected, there's now only four comparisons, and we happen to have had two swaps. Sometimes it's very tempting as a human being to just write all this out really quickly because our brains can easily see what the numbers should be in ascending or descending order. But we have to be careful to show the full working in order to get all of the marks. So again, with the 14 and the 9, we will have the 9 swapping with the 11 and then with the 10. which will leave a list as 14, 11, 10, 9, 8, 5, 2, and 1. The next time we check, we will notice that there are no swaps. So although we've made two comparisons, we've made no swaps, and therefore we will stop. Sometimes you do need to carry on until you are just checking a final um, two numbers. So, in summary for the bubble sort, either, if it's ascending or descending, the next largest or smallest number bubbles to the end of a list after each pass. You'll notice that the list in effect gets shorter by one element after each pass, so in other words there's one less comparison each time. The algorithm ends when a complete pass has been made with no swaps. This may or may not be when you've worked your way through all of the um, iterations for the comparisons. So do make a note of comparisons and swaps, which are in effect efficiency measures as you go along, as questions may include this. Note that there are PowerPoints on Integral and YouTube videos giving other examples of sorting algorithms. Do check that you only look at bubble and sort shuttle algorithms to avoid confusion. Make sure that you are able to answer questions such as what do you notice about the number of comparisons on each pass, in case this is a one marker, or what the maximum number of passes needed for a list of size n might be. In the next session, 1.5, we'll be looking at the shuttle sort algorithm.